We've had the opportunity to take a look at a couple of quad cards that turned out to be real dogs. One was by Cable CC, and the other one we just tried that was failure for different reasons was a card by Jai Eye that we had hoped to show you. That too turned out to be a dog. So we're going to swing this around and answering subscriber questions, we're going to move on to the next test. And I believe Max was one that asked us about this. We're going to take a look, actually another look, at the ASUS Hyper M.2 Tuba 16 card, the quad card. And this is the third card that ASUS has come out with. And after we do this, then we'll swing back, take another look at the Gigabat card. Okay, what's different this time? We're not doing anything with RAID. This is all about just the heat and speed test. So we'll put that up on the camera so we can look at the drive telemetry based on smart telemetry. And we're going to see, and this will give us a segue to look at how the heat sink on that card performs with those drives, first generation drives, and then how that performs with two second generation drives, PCI Express 4.0. So I hope you'll stay with us. We look forward to this. This should be exciting. Thank you. More information you guys probably wanted to know, but since you're not going to see the other video, I want you to be able to understand the what and the why and the where and the how. So this will be the third time that I've had to disassemble the GI. First time to assemble it, second time to change the orientation of the drives because they're stacked. Third time to get to drive three and four, which were on the back, so I could swap them. And this makes number four to get the drives out because on the GI card, the four drives, which are... Uh, and I'll have it in the description. They're Sabrent Rocket, PCI Express 4.0, first generation. So they're good for 5,000 megabytes. But on the GI card, drive number four shows zero, which is not true. So I want to swap positions in three and four and retest it. Card wouldn't boot, which was odd. So that identifies the GI card as a dog. I like dogs, but not in computer parts. Woof. I had high hopes for that card. So much for that. I think it's safe to say that not all M.2 uh, NVMe add-in cards, whether the quad cards or dual adapters, are made the same. They are not. Now, we've had a lot of drives swapped in and out on this card, and we're going to test it stock as it would come out of the box, meaning we're going to use the thermal pads that are there. Okay, we're going to pull the drives from the GI card and put them back on the ASUS Hyper M.2 Tuba 16 Generation 4 card. This is the third card that ASUS has come out with. Stellar product. And I do not like the thermal pads that Jai used. Man, those are a mess. So now we have two brands of M.2 NVMe adapters to stay away from. Cable CC and Jai. I think from now on, any card that I see that does not have the bracket on it, based on the peak experience from the last two, is going to be a drive that will be circumspect to stay away from. Because if that bracket is not on there, I question whether it's been tested. That may sound strange, but that's just speaking from experience. And another sign was that even though the box was sealed, the gi did not come in an anti-static bag. It just came in a bag. We have our four drives on the ASUS quad card. I'll be eager to see these drives once we get it back into Windows to see if they all show correctly. Because on the GI, to reiterate, one showed up as zero. I thought, no, no, that ain't right. We shall see. We have four M.2 NVMe drives secured. We have a heat sink that's going to go on there with thermal pads pre-applied, and I'm not changing them. This heat sink is actually two pieces put together. You can see daylight through there. And it's not machined as one. It's two pieces stacked one on top of the other. And then this back end is capped off. So we're going to get this reassembled. Check and verify the uh, integrity of our drives. Then we'll do the other good stuff we want to do. So no unboxing, although a reconfiguration the only inspection was comparing the two. The test we're getting to in the installation once we get through with these four screws. It's appropriate to do the heat and speed on this card because those tests will be for the most recent card. And I'll go over the test system again here as soon as we get this together, as we get ready to put it in. Okay, reassembled, ready to be installed. And that black tape was for the... Uh, emissivity reading we were trying to get.
that was when we were trying to use a thermal camera. And in conjunction with the thermal camera, we were trying to uh, use the PCI Express 4.0 riser cable. But as we have learned, the PCI Express 4.0 riser cable that Gigabyte has with their one unit rack mount TRX-40 is what we need to test something like this with. So another video, maybe we can get our hands on one of those, we'll see. Okay, in the system, and the system being, this is the Gigabyte TRX-40 designator where we have two 16 lane slots and two 8 lane slots. And we have the ASUS quad card, which is specifically called the ASUS Hyper M.2 the 16 generation 4 card in the primary 16 lane slot. The secondary 16 lane slot has an EVGA RTX 2080 Ti that is two slots wide. This is one slot wide. We have an open slot here where we've been using and testing with the Supermicro Dual M.2 NVMe adapter. And after interesting testing with this card and testing with some other cards, nothing beats what the Supermicro card can do. Right down here, we're using four lanes, which means the other four lanes we can't use because this is the Gigabyte Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3 card, PCI Express 3. And this card, PCI Express 4. And what determines the speed of the bus? Three things. One, the chipset on the motherboard. Number two, the speed of the memory. And number three, if there's a PLX chip, but we don't have a PLX chip. This is just straight I.O. We are plugged in, secure the card, RAID is turned off in the BIOS, and I won't get into all the details about that. But what I will do, since we've had so many issues with who's on first and what actually works, after going through cable CC that doesn't work, and now with the uh, GII also that does not work reliably, I want to verify the integrity of those drives first at the BIOS level before I go to Windows. So we're going to go and look at the boot and see if we're going to see five drives. And as I tab over to boot, I'll just go straight to it. We should see five drives. And we do. The Seagate Fire Cuda 520, which is that primary drive right there under the heat sink underneath the quad card. And that drive is on the primary connector to the CPU. A secondary connector, which is open right now where we've been doing testing with heat sinks. Connector number two is also to the CPU. And then M.2 NVMe connectors three and four are under a single heat sink underneath the video card and those two are through the chipset. So we are just verifying and defining where everyone is at. To reiterate, Seagate Fire Cuda 520 is the boot drive on the motherboard and those four Sabrent Rocket 4.0 2 terabyte drives are on the quad card. So all we have to do, F10 save and exit, reboot. Once we reboot, we'll get into Windows. And I don't know if we're going to need to use disk part to look at the drive. I'm going to try to first to see if we can do this with the uh, drive management. Post, I tell you that power on self-test is a wonderful thing. And I'm probably going to need to reformat these drives, but I'm hoping we're going to see all four of the drives. All four meaning the four on that quad card. And we should see two terabytes on all of them. Drive number four, which I had swapped on the GII card, said that drive was zero, which was not true. Let's see. Windows flag E, this PC. We see our two terabyte boot drive, C drive. We'll go to Control Panel, Administrative Tools, Computer Management, Disk Management, and we see Disk 0 is the Seagate, and then we'll scroll down here to Disk 1, 2, 3, and Disk 4. And I purposely swapped the drives around because this Disk 3 on the other card was Disk 4, and it did not see the drive and said it was 0, and there the drive is, it exists. So all I need to do is delete the volume. Now I have four drives. I'll now go through all four of these. Disk one, new simple volume. I'll use the wizard. The screen may jump a little bit because I'm zoomed in. Maximum capacity. I'm okay with the drive letter. Doesn't really matter. Drive D on down the tree will be fine. NTFS, new volume. Saber and disk one, quick format. And when I click finish, another window should pop up, which it did for that drive to be active. And we'll go down and do the rest. Disk number two. New simple volume. Next, next, drive F on down the line. Change the label, Sabrent disk two, finish. Then we'll go down to disk number three, new simple volume. Next, 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 new volume, disk three. Next, finish, close that out. And we will do disk four, simple volume. Next, 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 and that will be disk four, finish. Box pops up. We'll click this PC, and we now see our four drives. Sabrent disk one, two, three, and four. So we can go down through the tree and test all four of the drives. So I can close all this out. First thing we'll do is bring up 
hardware info for drive telemetry, sensors only, run, and we see our primary drive, the Seagate Fire Cuda. So let's see if we can get all four of these Sabren drives up where we can see them. Yes. Okay. We're looking at the minimum, maximum, and the average. The first drive, I didn't check the numbers, but if the numbers are correct with the drives, then we should be looking at the top drive first. We'll bring up Crystal Disk Mark, and we'll do all four drives in succession. Now, these drives are two terabyte drives. So we'll go through the tree and run this test four times. Drive D with a two terabyte drive, we need a two gigabyte test file. All. I'll highlight. We'll double check and see where our temps go. My original concern with hardware info, I didn't know if we were reading specific temperatures from the thermistors on the M.2 drives or if we were reading a mathematical equation which approximates heat based on voltage. Okay, drives are numbered in succession. That's good. So we're looking at the minimum and the max. We've achieved, first of all, that these are PCI Express 4.0 first generation drives. So we're right at 5,000 megabytes. If these were PCI Express 4.0 second generation, we would be at 7,000 megabytes. And if we were at PCI Express 4.0, if you want to call it the third ones, the third generation sort of, it's actually, uh, according to AMD and Fizen, the E18 controller, of which there are three, that use the Micron flash memory. And those get a read of over 7,000 megabytes, but they get a write of almost 7,000 megabytes. I'll have a list of those three drives up, as well as these drives that are in the machine. Now, we'll get our maximum heat from this reading on the left when we get to the second number of megabytes on the right. And this is not like a throughput test. This is more like a burst mode test. Two ways to do uh, an actual throughput test would be either to repeat this test three times or to take a file of a specified size and copy it from one drive to another and back again, but a different file so that they're not in the cache. But this is a good start. And after all the heat sinks we've tested, this can help us to appreciate the heat sinks that come on the quad cards. And the only issue right now we have is a heat sink on the uh, Supermicro dual adapter, which simplifies the case because we're not looking at other quad cards. Okay, test number one complete. A maximum heat, a minimum. We started at 34 degrees with a cold boot and we got to a maximum of 49. That is impressive, 49 degrees. That was on drive number one. And we could improve that if we changed out the thermal pads. Okay, now we got to repeat the process. Drive number two. I'll do a screen capture of that. When to start flag, print screen. We'll go to drive letter F, two terabyte drive, two gigabyte test file, all. Now the numbers should come in close to the same. The question will be how the temperatures come in because we should now be on the second drive. For a stock product out of the box, that's extraordinary considering what we've been through with heat sinks. So someone asked the question, where's the best place to put an M.2 drive? Well, for speed, number one, to the CPU. So if you have a primary or a secondary M.2 connector on the motherboard that is to the CPU, that's the fastest. Number two, if you have a slot, whether it's a by 16 or by 8 electrically, also to the CPU, not through the chipset. And if you have something like a uh, high-end desktop with a TRX40 chipset, you can put in a quad card. If, however, you've got something like an X570 chipset because of resource allocation where they share slot PCI Express resources, in other words, by 16 single or dual by 8, then you're better off with a dual M.2 NVMe adapter like the Supermicro. Test number two complete. Minimum 34 degrees Celsius. Maximum 53 degrees Celsius. So we are at 49 and now 53. Test number three, drive letter G. Two terabyte, two gigabyte, all. Highlight, drive number three, test number three complete. We are at 49 degrees, so 49, 53, and 49. Now for drive number four, H, two terabyte, two gigabyte test file, all. And we will highlight, drive number four. And test for drive number four is now complete. So we have established 45 degrees Celsius. So we started at the top. The maximum was 49 degrees, 53 degrees, 49 degrees, and 45 degrees. Now that's kind of fascinating. What kind of correlation do we make with this, with the test we've just completed, to understand how this fits in with the other heat sinks and all that other stuff is done? Okay, what we've established is one thing. Is one, we know what the speed is of PCI Express 4.0 first generation drives that run at 5,000 megabytes. All the other tests we've done, 
with the Supermicro Dual M.2 NVMe adapter. And what we've established with this card using these two drives, these two drives meaning the WD Black SN850 and the Samsung 980 Pro, these are both one terabyte drives. These other drives we've just tested with are two terabyte drives. So we have a set of specs based on heat and speed and capacity for those drives. So as we look at PCI Express 4.0 first generation, and we try to compare that to PCI Express 4.0 second generation, you know, there's a gap there. The best thing we can do, which is the next test we need to do, is we need to put these two drives that are on the Supermicro Dual M.2 NVMe adapter and put them on the Asus Quad Card in position one and two and test just those two drives. We have to have four drives on the card or else we get into a load balancing issue. I don't want to get into that, but uh, I'm game. Let's try it. So I need to do a uh, screen capture, and I have recorded our four numbers, and now we're going to have one more test, okay, actually two, where we'll get two more numbers for PCI Express 4.0 second generation drives. This stuff is fascinating. Stay tuned. So power is drained. Disconnect the power supply, so we know there's no power, and all the uh, capacitors are not charged, discharged. So now we're going to pull the quad card, change out two drives. One more test. So that way we have some correlation to understand heat and speed. Meaning this uh, third set of drives that are PCI Express 4.0, which again to reiterate, AMD and Fizon have identified with the E18 controller, of which there are three, that uses that controller with the uh, Micron flash memory. Those three are the fastest on PCI Express 4 right now. Then after that we jump PCI Express 5 and then we jump PCI Express 6. Wow. Out comes the quad card. And we're going to pull two drives and swap them around. Because if we don't, I can hear Max and a few others of you saying, well, what about, what if, woulda, coulda, shoulda. So we're going to do the woulda, coulda, shoulda right now. So this should cover the what, why, and how. And then we'll have some kind of a bridge gapping that correlation from PCI Express 4.0 first generation on this card the PCI Express 4.0 second generation on the other card, and then uh, get some kind of semblance to make sense of the heat sink that's on here. Are we going to learn anything? I have no idea. But uh, as always, I know enough to know I need to know more, and the more I learn, the more I realize how little I know. So it goes. Change one thing changes everything. We want to keep it simple and make it work. Oh, and by the way, this is Builder By. My name's Gil Boyd. Welcome back to it. After testing some of these products that are really dogs, it makes me appreciate the ones that are good products. Put the heat sink aside, bring the cards over, pull the push pins, and let's pull the drives one and two. It's interesting, we're labeled as we look at these. I'm just going to go through this real quick, look at heat. Okay, fan down here, drive number one. These are labeled one through four from left to right. 49 degrees. 53 degrees, 49 degrees, 45 degrees. Any correlation with location based on that? Don't know, but I wanted to point that out because now we're going to see how these are affected. If the highest temperature is on position number two, we've always kept the WD black in position number one. I'm going to do that again. And yes, we keep the labels on. Here's a good reason and a good example. If I didn't keep the labels on, I wouldn't know who's on first. I wouldn't be able to make sense of any of them because with all this testing we do, that's the only thing I know. And then I'll set these two Sabrent drives aside on the Super Micro card for now so I'll know where they're at, safe and secure. And get these two secure. The WD Black SN850 in position 1 and the Samsung 980 Pro in position 2. Get our heat sink back on and we're only going to test those two drives. I get the four on the perimeter and then I'll get the other two installed. And because we're doing this part of the test, this will give me a segue so that I can then introduce and show the uh, chart from all the other testing we've done with heat sinks. How does that sound? Okay, cards assembled. Back into the box we go to the first 16 lane slot. This makes me more curious about some of the other cards we've seen listed. If it's by a name brand, I would trust it a lot more, but some of the no-name stuff would make me more uh, circumspect based on results from uh, the other two we said they're no good. Okay, cards in, secure, power. Power's plugged in, 
turned on, energize, powering up, post codes. We'll hear the post beep off the speaker in a minute. And once we hear post, I'm going to go to the BIOS just to verify and see those two drives in position one and two, because they should be in the hierarchical structure. And then we'll go into Windows. Okay, post. Let's tap on boot. And that's interesting. Okay, so the uh, Sabrents, which are on one and two, show up as three and four. And the WD Black and the Samsung show up as five and six. So we'll have to pay attention and watch that when we get into Windows. That's what I wanted to see. Okay, all I need to do now is uh, F10, save it, and uh, we'll reboot, go through the post, into Windows. And once we get into Windows, we should be able to go right on and do our thing. Post. Now, I've already set labels, which I've done previously on the Super Micro card for those two drives, for the WD Black SN850 and for the Samsung 980 Pro. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of order we get. Windows. First thing to check, Windows flag E, this PC. And it still says four Sabrent drives. It hadn't refreshed yet. So just for grins, okay, those other drives just popped up. Windows flag E, this PC. Ah, now they're showing. I was moving too fast. Okay, WD Black showed up as drive D, which it's always been. That's the first one. Samsung 980 Pro is drive F, and they just disappeared. Not good. Let's go to Control Panel, Administrative Tools, Computer Management. Disk management. Yep, WD Black SN850 shows up. Samsung 980 Pro shows up. And then disk 3 and 4 show up. Okay, close all that down. Windows flag E, this PC. Yeah, they came back again. I should be able to go ahead. Let's go to uh, hardware info, sensors only. We're going to be looking at smart telemetry. Let's scroll down and find our disks. Okay, there's the boot drive, the Seagate Firecuda 520. Okay, there's the WD Black SN850 with one thermistor and the Samsung 980 Pro, which has two thermistors. And as it's been pointed out, the second thermistor on the Samsung 980 Pro is the controller chip. So we're going to do the first one for the Samsung 980 Pro. Let's bring up Crystal Disk Mark. We're looking at the C drive, and we're going to go to D drive. And the size now is a one terabyte, all highlight. Now we're looking at the temperature for the uh, current minimum, maximum, and average. And we'll see how that correlates to previous tests. First thing we've established, 7,000 megabytes, so we know PCI Express 4.0, second generation. And the heat we'll achieve when we get to the second number on the megabytes on the right. And then, of course, to reiterate, we'll repeat the test for the Samsung 980 Pro. Okay, test complete. Now, to reiterate, we're looking at PCI Express 4.0, second generation, and that's on the WD Black SN850. And we topped out at 50 degrees. That's pretty fascinating and phenomenal. And the Sabrent drive in that same position topped out at 49 degrees Celsius. Pretty good. Okay, let's go to the next one, which should be drive F. I'll double check. Windows flag E, this PC, Samsung 980 Pro, drive F. Again, a one terabyte drive, one gigabyte test file, all. And we will highlight, and we're looking at the minimum, maximum, and the average. And of course, the Samsung 980 Pro comes in just a little bit slower, still a good drive, but just a little bit slower for PCI Express 4.0 second generation. And these other three that I've mentioned come in, I believe, around 7,100 to 7,200 megabytes per second, which I'm eager to test. And of those three, the one we're looking at is the Seagate Firecuda 530. And based on the specs, it needs to be on the 2 terabyte or larger drive to get that speed. And that test is complete. And we top out at 49 degrees, which is kind of curious when you think about it. In that second position at 49 degrees for a PCI Express 4.0 second generation drive, Whereas the Sabrent, which is PCI Express 4.0 first generation, topped out at 53. Tests are always fascinating. Now, we've tested two speeds of drives. We did the first set of four, and then we did the second set with two. Let's look at the chart, see how that compares for those that want some kind of a make sense of this. I don't really think you can. Uh, all, all you can do is look at it and say, okay, the takeaway. A lot of factors putting one of these together. When you install an M.2 drive on a motherboard, and remember, we've looked at three places to put a heat sink. Number one, a dual M.2 NVMe adapter, specifically the Super Micro. Number two, a quad card that didn't have a heat sink that should. We looked at one that was a dog that you'll never see. We looked at another one that had a heat sink. Again, you'll never see. So heat sinks really are, for those three locations, number one for the motherboard. Based on what we've tested, where do you get the best performance on an M.2 drive? Well, first of all, it's got to be whatever connected to the CPU. So if it's on the motherboard, how well can we control the heat? 
Let's look at the chart. Okay, the WD Black SN850 on the Supermicro Dual M.2 NV adapter. In fact, all these numbers, and I've separated them out, active, passive, dual, referring to the Supermicro Dual, and on the motherboard in the second position. And defining the second position, the boot drive is number one, the second position number two would be where there's nothing right now because we've got some more drives to test. Okay, all the tests on that chart are in that second position. So that way you have some relevance. The point of it being anything with heat pipes. We went from a uh, Sabrent number five. We actually tested 12 different heat sinks, but we've got this set of tests listed from one to 20 of all the tests that we've done. So it make makes sense. Number one, the WD Black SN850 on the Supermicro Dual M.2 NVMe adapter, bare, in the primary position. Number two, on the Gigabat TRX40 designated motherboard, in that second position with that heat sink stock with one thermal pad 65. Okay, where things got really good was when we went to heat pipes. The Sabrent number five at 54 degrees. The Acidly has been the best at 48 degrees. And then looking at these numbers, and I'll, I'll put this in a chart, and what I may do is put it with that chart, put it on the side, and um, which means we'll have to show it in another video. But at uh, the Sabrent for uh, 49 degrees, in the primary position on the quad card versus the WD Black in the primary position at 50 degrees. And then in there on the quad card in the second position, 53 degrees for the Sabrent versus 49 degrees for the Samsung 980 Pro. PCI Express 4 version 1 versus PCI Express 4 version 2 right now looks like a pretty close, pretty even match, pretty much a wash. And then the other two drives coming in at 49 degrees and 45 degrees in position 3 and 4. Okay. Fascinating results. So back to the question is, where do you get the best speed, anything connected to the CPU, on the primary or secondary connector to the motherboard, or if the PCI Express slot is connected to the CPU and not routed through the chipset. And if you have connectors on your motherboard that have a heat sink, 65 degrees is what we had, whereas on the quad card, we did really, really good, because when you compare that with the Acidly 4 pipe at 48, and we came in at 49, to 50 to 53 that ain't bad which tells me you're okay on the motherboard but you get really good cooling off of a quad car based on just this little informal test this is not the end of it by, by any means because I know Max is gonna ask okay well what about the Gigabyte Aorus glad you ask another video I want to thank you guys for watching this is Builder by my name is Gil Boyd we're on to the next one we're out <laughs> <laughs>